And there's a notion of like what I would call rigid stability, which is basically, can I track the price of this other thing versus robust stability, which is, can I maintain a relatively strong purchasing price power over time compared to whatever economy I'm in, right? And that's where I think the really interesting thing uh, to explore here is that Kwai is doing some other projects like the Mel Project and some others that are based on energy or compute, assets that um, fluctuate uh, in terms of dollar basis. It's really hard to think about what stability and price is without dollar as a numeraire or a denominator. But when you think about your purchasing power over time, what you can buy, how much the value that you hold is worth in terms of the goods and services you may want to exchange them for in the future. Uh, this idea of robust stability, something like energy or compute, that over time is like a fundamental asset or price that is kind of naturally connected to the economy that you live in. And that's like a really interesting one. How do you view kind of that notion of like, what is stability in this world? And it's it's kind of a tough concept to wrap your head around when you start thinking out of the outside of the box of USD. How can people kind of like wrap their heads around the concept of something that isn't fiat based as a denominator or numeraire? Yeah, I'm, I mean, the, the way I think about it is, like what you what you ultimately care about as a consumer is what you can buy for whatever money you have right. right and the denomination is just a convenient unit of measure so that you can sort of plan and price without uh, too much cognitive burden right so if i had something that was wildly fluctuating and i went to get a coffee at starbucks and you know, one day it was eight dollars, the next day it was four, the next day it was six. I would I would kind of have difficulty cognitively yeah. dealing with those price fluctuations. So that's kind of like a Bitcoin sort of scenario. Um, but but fundamentally, from my perspective, I'm most interested in just like how many cups of coffee can I get? Right. Or how many roast beef sandwiches can I buy? Right. Or or how much is this many uh Chevrolet pickup trucks I can buy with it, right? Like that's that's my concept of stability. So when I think about the dollar, um, you know, it used to be that you could go into Starbucks probably only 10 years ago and four bucks you were out with a espresso drink. And now it seems you get espresso drinks and each one of them is like eight bucks, yeah. right? Um, you know, and that's, that's inflation for you. Now, the thing that the dollar does for us is it gets this idea of, of low um, volatility but it's always uh, losing value. So over any given period of time, if it's one year, five years, 10 years, certainly these days, it's, it feels like it's every year that it's losing significant amounts of its value. Um, I can price in it from day to day, but I also know that from year to year, my dollar is gonna be worth less and it's gonna get more expensive. So I'm, I'm forced into this game of, if I wanna maintain my purchasing power, I need this dollar unit that's non-volatile to sort of like easily price and transact things, but then I also need something that's gonna preserve my value. So right. it's actually forcing every saver in the economy to speculate or invest or do something because they can't just hold their wealth in dollars and expect to get ahead because they're just losing any wealth they can possibly accumulate. So, you know, uh, the, uh, um, BLS, right? Like they, they come up with like CPI numbers. Um, but, you know, they might say inflation is 4% core, but in reality, we all know. And if you look at numbers, that's much closer to real inflation of 10 or 15% uh, in any given year. We've seen some like pretty, pretty high years of inflation in the last couple of years. So if you're thinking about like your total aggregate wealth in life and you're trying to sort of accumulate and get ahead. If you're always losing 10% of your stored up value every year, is there like yeah. any possibility you're ever gonna like get above a certain threshold? Yeah. You're just gonna like logarithmically tail out. So, um, you know, by the time I've worked for 10 years, you know, in, unless I'm significantly increasing my earnings every year, year over year, by year 10, I'm never gonna get more wealthy again. Cause yeah. like I've like, I've peaked because I'm just gonna be always running against inflation. So what I make every year is gonna get eaten up in inflation every year. So there's there's like a cap on wealth that exists unless you go into hard assets, gold, land, investing in stocks, Airbnb like hustle. And that's what you see everybody doing in this economy, right? Is anyone who's trying to get ahead is like trying to run a hustle of some sort, flipping homes or renting or something. Mm -hmm. um, 
But in terms of what I think of as stability, I think of it as trucks, coffees, <laughs> and uh, beef. It's like yeah. my my thought process. Big Macs, the Big Mac index. No, no, is not I... <laughs> not Big Macs. Man. Grass fed, grass uh, fed, hey, pasture raised, well, of antibiotic like, well, you're, free. You're talking about a version of like shrinkflation, right? Which is where like the, <laughs> maybe the price doesn't change, but the ingredient mix does, and you're actually getting watered down on that side of the equation. Because uh, like Big Macs used to have like pretty quality beef, pretty quality like. Well, buns. they used to they used to fry those. <laughs> yeah. McDonald's beef used tallow. Yeah. Used yeah. to use tallow in the That's fryers, right. man. That's right. And yeah. now we're canola oil. Right. So that's the, other, that's the other side of the measure, right? Yeah. It's like they're just measuring inflation, but there's like the shrinkflation or, or some version of it where it's maybe not just size, but ingredient mix as well. It, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, I've definitely gotten much more health conscious, specifically food conscious in the last couple of years. Um, and I was just thinking back, my sort of adolescence uh, through high school was probably the peak of just like absolutely horrifically bad for you concepts of processed and packaged foods mm -hmm. right when i was in high school people were like oh sun chips are like a healthy option mm. yeah and everybody would have a slice of pizza and mountain dew for lunch and this was just like a normal everyday existence that wasn't like thought of as bad and looking back on it you're like how did i even live through yeah. that yeah i mean it's just it's just crazy yeah um you know but but i think if, if we go back a little further in time right getting off of the gold standard in 71 fully uh, when Nixon closed the gold window, right? There's many a graph that shows that the, the aggregate real purchasing power of U.S. homes has been declining since then. And that's why uh, I think you see the rise of processed food with worse ingredients. You see the concept of having to have two uh, employee households where both the husband and wife are working so that they can afford to have kids and go to school and like even kids are getting expensive now, mm -hmm. even with two people working, all of that has to do with coming off of a real valued standard tied to real uh, energy and value, i.e. gold. And in doing that, the government's just been eating away at society for the last 50 years now. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of coming to a head in terms of what they can get away with, with surreptitiously taxing us by inflation every year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when, when I think of stability, I think of real world assets. I think of the things that I consume. So, you know, if I can buy more stakes next year than this year, uh, I guess I'm making more money. Yeah.